Hey everyone, and welcome back to another tutorial today. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be continuing my brand new series of building a Future A style song from scratch. In this episode of the series, we are going to be finessing the drop and building a breakdown. Using 100% of my brand new sample pack that just came out last week in collaboration with EDM Tips, and it is called EDM Tips Creative Toolkit. And this sound bank has over 115 presets for Vital and Serum, and also has over 270 samples handcrafted from multiple genres. This sound bank is amazing. I'm going to be using it throughout the series. If you want to get a copy or support me as an artist, it'll be in the link in the description or you can head over to the EM Tips website. So without further ado, let's head into this. So last time we built a drop, I'm going to be finessing it. So I'm going to play you what we have so far so you get an idea. And yeah, we'll go from there. So yeah, we have some stuff to work with here. So we're actually instantly going to add an impact here or a sub drop from the sample pack. So we're going to head over and we are going to go to the Crave Toolkit. We're going to go to the effects because there's so many effects. We got so many reverses, glitches. We got like reverses. We'll be using that guy later on, I think. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of stuff here. So we're going to go with a downlifter because there's some uh, impacts in here. That's perfect for what we need. So we're going to add him. We're going to crossfade quickly because we don't want to go into the second part. So let's see what that sounds like. And we're also going to take out the kick drum, I think. And then we can take off the side chain there. So we're going to just mute everything here. And that's just using zero on my Windows keyboard here, if you guys want to know that. <laughs> Just add some contrast taking out the kick drum, like it's interacting with the elements here. And it, it just really, it's like takes a minute away from like, whoa, what happened there kind of thing. So it's kind of like an element of surprise, you weren't expecting it. And then we've also, in the previous episode, going with the flanger and the reverb um, effect with the doubling the notes. Uh, that just really adds a suspense, tension, and surprise. And then the drop even hits harder because it comes back with all that low end energy. Basically like a mini buildup is what that effect is. So yeah, now we're adding a impact here. And then we're also going to add a misc effect. I think a reverse would be nice going right back in. So let's see if it's on point back over here. So now we're gonna bring that down a bit. Bring them both down. Perfect. And we're going to add a automation for the LFO tool. This would just be using a compressor. Well, the compressor will do it by itself, or you have to automate it using one of the knobs, the mix knob. This guy. Let's go to LFO tool, device on on all the time other than in here we're going to boost that back over here and yeah now we'll go right this guy back so yeah we got that going we're also going to add some white noise so that can make this drop really hit so if we grab just some standard white noise, just it goes to show, you can like 
if you're doing like a lecture house or something, you can layer this on top of notes or something like that. You can get really creative, build your own effects with them and stuff. So that's why I threw this guy in here. So we're going to put this guy on top of the drop here. So we're going to throw on a ball. Now we'll use a uh, normal reverb, I think. And basically we'll take some of the low end out because you never want low end in that. We're also going to turn the quality up to high. Always do that if you can, if you have the CPU power. It'll just make the reverb so much better in Ableton. Or just use a Valhalla or something like that. Your favorite reverb plugins. Now it should be sounding more like a downlifter. going to duplicate that to the other side there. I'm also going to take the automation of this guy. My bad. I'm going to duplicate this whole section. Put it over here. Then there's something with the reverb that we're going to do. Not the reverb. Might have been the reverb actually. Let's see? I'm going to do something like this, just a little bit right now. For now, we're going to do this. So yeah, the drop's sounding really big, so if we want to take the reverb, because the reverb in Serum is not the best, um, there's just a quality difference, I think, personally. And you'll probably hear this from a lot of artists, but we're going to do something that Future Rave does, which is kind of like the W and W effect, which is like this pumping side chain that I personally do a lot on vocals. Um, so we're going to actually build a send track quickly or return track, and we're going to call this a um, drop lead reverb. And basically, we're going to apply a reverb on here, like this guy. Low cut it once again. And I really high decay time, probably about 10, something like that. Mix 100% and change the quality to high. And basically, we're going to take the lead. We're going to take the reverb off of this guy for now. So I'm very sorry. And then we're going to apply this other reverb. And you're already hearing it, but to get that WW effect, we have to throw a compressor on here. So we're just going to do this with the one in Ableton, which is amazing for side chaining, I think. And then you can just put this guy on, side chain, and then uh, pull down the threshold. <laughs> getting it but we still need that giant more reverb being automated so I'm just gonna take the one with inside serum for now and we're just gonna automate it so we have the reverb here right here so we're going to pull down this guy we're just going to do something like this <laughs> See, the reverb's not sounding as huge as that we want it, but the thing is, if doing it either on a send or a return track or even on the normal one, if if you put a saturator or something on it before um, or after the reverb, you are actually 
saturating or distorting that reverb, which gives more harmonics, in my opinion. And, and you make it sound bigger and more warm rather than just a digital reverb. So we're actually going to apply a saturator. And this is kind of like um, using the concept of what goes before what or after what on your, your mixer tracks really do matter. They, they really do. When you understand this concept, it will change your whole mixing and even your sound design. So we're going to apply some drive. <laughs> Everything. I'm just trying to bring down the volume a bit of everything so we're not clipping. a bit. Yep, this guy's Just brought it down so I, I don't know how it's really going to sound on your guys' end, but still coming on mine. Um, it's just bringing it down a little bit right now because I'm just trying to get in a better mixing position. And also, uh, so it's not clipping so much on the master because Ableton clips a lot, apparently. Bring down the uh, claps here a little bit more, and also the hi hats. The rock. <laughs> We're also going to apply a transient shaper to uh, the melody a little bit to make it punch just a bit harder. You might not see this this often, but with a sawtooth, you can really exaggerate the melody when doing this. So we're going to apply this guy before going into a compressor. Just add a little bit of <laughs> a slight little difference so we got that out of the way so now we can start building a breakdown and basically we can do it a couple different ways we can build a whole different kind of melodic breakdown or we can start it there's so many different ways you can do it in future rave i think this could be the best way to do it so this is the way i'm gonna do it i think and basically we're gonna just copyright everything down like this. Make sure your uh, LFO tool is off during the break. Oh my God. So now we are going to uh, apply some other stuff to this. So we are going to start building the break on top of this guy. So we're going to start doing insert MIDI because I want to add a Reese first. So basically we're just going, we can do chord progression or just a straight line. It all depends on the contrast and tension that you want in your song and melodic wise. But there's a lot of Reese bases. We can even head over to... Um, the vital too. So let's see what we got here. Sorry, I had a slight problem there. So back here. So we're gonna go and 
start finding a Reese. Let's see what we can find. No, some really, really good ones. That could be a really good Reese. That's not bad. It's a different Reese. Ooh. Yeah, we're going to head over to Vital, I think, for this guy. Now we can always create one. Very simple. Vital. Create a lot of different sounds for this. I'm going to go for. Let's see what we got in here. It's not a bad one. Reese one. Yeah, we're gonna go back to the other one. Let's go. I'm gonna take down the automation a bit. going to start building a little progression. Let's see, because we're in key of F sharp. Actually, going to maybe do something a little different in the build up with the pitching. We're going to add a pitching automation here. Basically, we're going to make it go up and we're going to turn the bend up to 12. We're going to apply pitching to make it go up. Take it back to 50. Put this at the start for the intro. Basically, now we're going to just start creating a um, build up, basically, and we can use claps, snares, stuff like that for this. Basically, we're going to do an uplifter. And this guy could be really good for this. It's perfect. It has like a phaser kind of thing. You can add this guy near the end. Tweak this perfectly on the grid.
I'll put this guy. Basically, we're going to do a filtering trick once again. It starts to go down, and then it comes all the way back up. We're just going to use the EQ8 once again. And we're going to basically start to filter it down a bit. And then all of a sudden, it's just going to shoot back up like that. <laughs> wash it out with reverb in here so it gets really really intense and then it all of a sudden comes really dry again this is a really good technique that you can hear in future This has like a, an impact, in my opinion, doing this. Now we're also going to insert some more audio tracks. And we are going to now start adding some build up drums. So we can take some of the snares, for example, because we have lots of snares. Basically, we can start building a build up out of it. And go simple build up for a bit. And we start also layering that with claps. Layering is a very... That's perfect. Perfect, perfect clap. Basically, we can start getting this cool kind of sound going. We're actually going to do snare rolls, I think, would be the best under this. So we're actually going to insert a MIDI track and insert MIDI. If I can load this guy up. Oh yeah, I need to redo this. There we go. And then if I go to, I think it's C3. Start to see what we're going to do. So going to basically we're going to now continue with the claps here to make these guys also have a volume change and always if you're going to do volume do uh, the utility because you never want to change your um, faders and like have those automating because then like if you want to fine tweak something later it's all automated throughout the song 
And then is this going to be a problem to unlink those? And it's just not the best way of working. So, yeah, make sure you're using a utility if you're going to do volume. Best tip I can give. So now we're going to automate that guy. Just a bit. Also going to apply more reverb over time make it bigger once again low cut higher decay uh, we can automate that we're also going to put back on high and we're going to start playing with the dry and wet on this guy to make it really really big going to take a EQ8 wherever it went and then we're going to start taking out some of the low end it gets higher So let's continue on with the claps. Uh, we can just make those guys speed up. It's basically how a build up goes. Become very intense. I think I go really fast at the end. Maybe let it continue on after. Basically, we're just gonna. Make it go really, really fast. All right. Once again, we are going to take a reverb, put it on top, and EQ8. So we're going to put a reverb on top of that. So that gets filtered. High cut, high pass, higher decay. And then we're going to control the dry wet. And then we're just going to basically put it really, really high. So yeah, it's basically how you can get that down really, really fast. Uh, we're also going to take the crash from over here, and we're going to put one here. I'm going to quickly apply a kickstart to this guy. kickstart so that's that and basically after having we're also 
going to quickly put a impact actually before we move on to the next thing I was going to say. Um, we're going to apply another impact here and we're going to apply a downlifter once again. Impact. Which is going to be great for the transition between the build ups and stuff. Don't want to throw too many in for this project, I think. But you can basically layer impacts if you want, depending on what you are going for. That's what I do, all different volumes and different ones throughout the song. So it's that guy. And then actually what I was going to do, what I was going to say earlier, is we're going to throw this guy a stab for the transition for this break. We're going to quickly take off the device for this guy. So it's just like... And then basically, we're going to take this guy and we're going to filter him back in using a filter. EQ8. I'm going to filter it back in. Basically, also what we can add probably is white noise after it. Maybe even the crashes would work. And then we can also apply marijuana. And then basically, we can, we're going to go for more of a simple break and maybe add extra counter me melodies on top. And basically, we are going to add pads because this is very related to trance music um, from what I've heard. So, yeah, we're going to add some beautiful pads and stuff. And it's not letting me add a MIDI file for some reason. Weird. Oh yeah, if I'm stupid, there we go. There we go. So we're going to basically just keep the melody out and build something on top of it. And then we know it works in the theme that we want. You don't always have to do this. Just depends on the break that we're going for. And I'm going for more of a simpler break because other ones are more vocal heavy and stuff. You want to go more beautiful, organic trance kind of stuff. At least in my opinion, that's what I'm hearing a lot in this style of music. So, but if you're going for more of the club, club kind of like Shapov, kind of Morton stuff, or just heavier kind of stuff, then yeah, that's what I would recommend you do. So we're gonna build a, I think it's a four bar progression. We're also gonna put the melody on top of it. progression should work so we're going to now also insert a made track and we're going to try and mess around with some of the pads I created for the sample pack so basically 
Let's see what we got in serum because we got some beautiful keys that can be turned on the pads. We got tons of stuff in here. Let's go for maybe pad ambience. Let's see what we got. That one could work. Very good for future bass. Future bass. Future bass. Yeah, so we're going to go with this guy, I think. Good work. If not, we'll go with Vital. So they build a lot of future bass ones, but... So yeah, we're playing the notes F sharp. Wrong sound. There we go. So we're playing the notes. I'm going to copy these over. So we know. We're gonna play another octave on top. Wherever they went. Let's just go up with these guys. So from what I know, we could go probably a minor chord. I'm basically using suspended chords. Here. Got some signature. And then we're going down to D sharp, and it's going to be in our major chord. Basically, we're going to and also, once I have all these constructed, it's sounding beautiful so far. It's what you want in this style of music. Could be our chord progression so far and we know it works with the melody basically so we're going to duplicate the same sound over but we're going to delete everything and we're also going to mute this guy and actually, what we're going to do here, we're going to go into the preset, and this just goes to show how much stuff you can do.
section. We're gonna have drums, and we're gonna also go in depth and add some extra layers, I think. So we're gonna automate this guy. So I'll actually put this under a macro quickly. So then it'll be simple. I'm gonna automate it in. turn on the res a bit uh, we're also going to add the extra harmonic layer I think so we're gonna add this guy here if we can I don't know why it's being weird interesting yeah I'll have to make a new sync now maybe yeah we'll have to make a new sync now because I don't want to deal with that but we're going to basically of course it's being weird again Okay, we're going to do this again. Okay, we're going to do this quickly. Hmm. I guess I'm going to make a duplication of this track and maybe we can add a giant lead instead. Interesting. I don't know why it does that. It's happened to me so many times and I still can't figure it out. I'm so new to this Ableton stuff, but. Let's add the lead again. It's called Morton. We could actually even add a whole different lead, actually, to make it even cooler. Uh, we can even add, like, Pav or nothing on top of this guy. That will sound cool. Also gonna add some drums under this insert audio and we're gonna start adding a four on the four kick so let's go back to the sample pack drums add. even the analog kick drum which is just amazing one of my favorite kicks in the pack I have to say because it's built on an analog synthesizer so let's quickly get a four on the four beat Basically. I'm going to start uh, using a sidechain. So we're going to use an LFO tool for this. Just add a nice sidechain. This guy over here. Cool. And we're also gonna put a side chain on this guy. No, he's already side chained. I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Nope, he's on. Make sure he's off. <laughs> to also take a EQ and bring down this highs
So yeah, we're also going to just add a little bit of saturation to the pad, bring it down a bit. Pads on a meme a bit. Weird animation. Though. a different kick actually for this. Something a little bit more punchy. That's perfect. It's actually what we need right there. Need just something with a lot more sub. Um kind of referencing from a track by maybe Geta and Morton and what I'm trying to do. Perfect. And then we can also add like percussion, effects, all that good stuff. Uh, what else could we add here? Yeah, we can fine tweak that all later. Uh, we're going to add all this stuff again. Place copy. And we're going to basically loop this pad. Just want to get a whole arrangement down in terms of what I want. Oops. Let's copy everything from here. Thanks. I'm just going to do this. I'll just take it all, I guess. All from here. Why does it keep taking everything? Okay, cool. This is what I want. And then basically we're going to bring it over here. paste and then copy okay I'll just do it the simple way it's just gonna take a little bit more time and then we're gonna bring it over cool cool
my bad. I'm just going to recopy everything, I guess. Mm. I felt so much faster at copying, though. That's a fact, but it's whatever. quickly take over these guys they have the automation and then bam I'm going to duplicate this guy actually quickly and move him down because actually doing so, I grab that by accident, but doing so basically gives me more flexibility with how loud I actually want it. If I want it a little lower than the others, it's the silent. some reverb just like the other bring them up and then it's just gonna go down just like the other we're also gonna take them down in volume we don't really want to include this in the drop, I don't think. I just want to add more contrast. And uh, let's apply the utility once again, like I said. Show automation. And bring them down over time. Just a bit. More contrast. <laughs> Parts. 
can actually oops I'll bring down these guys actually so then they're right. <laughs> bar here. Make sure we'll just take it out because I know we're not gonna need it in the last bar. And then we're also going to take out basically in the finishing touches on the drops other than the heavy mixing that we're going to do in the next episode this is going to be a really really long one so if you're still here thank you and i hope you're learning something because i've been working on some future race stuff and just want to share some stuff for you guys while i'm promoting this new pack so yeah i think that's it So yeah, I think we got the whole main theme down so far. And it's a really long episode, so I'm going to end it here. But yeah, if you guys um, learned something or you, um, you learned something or you enjoyed watching this, um, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you want to continue seeing a series like this. And also leave a comment below if you are liking this series. If you want to see something more in another style, if you want to see something like a certain sound made, because I can I can make any sound you guys want. Um, and yeah, I, I can go ahead and start doing that for you guys. And yeah, and if you really like what you're hearing so far from the sound bank, because this is 100% from the sound bank I've crafted with EDM tips, you guys can go pick it up in the description below, or you can go over to the EDM tips website or even my website that will be linked below. So yeah, guys, I will... Uh, Catch you in the next tutorial. And uh, yeah, guys, I'm going to head out. See you guys.